Hi, my name's Dr. Catherine White. I'm the medical director for the Institute for Addressing Strangulation. If we're talking about uh, an adult female, then again, it would depend on the size of the woman and the uh, amount of muscles in her neck, as well as the size of the perpetrator. If we're thinking of some of the main structures in the neck that might be affected by strangulation, you have the veins um, in the neck on either side of the windpipe, which are bringing blood down from the brain back to the heart. The veins are fairly superficial, so close to the skin, and it only takes four PSI, pounds per square inch, to block off the veins. A bit deeper inside the neck are the arteries, so you've got the carotid arteries on either side. It takes 11 PSI, pounds per square inch, to block off the arteries. The windpipe, um, here at the, in the middle, the front of the neck, um, if you feel your own windpipe, you will feel that there's cartilage rings giving some protection. So that takes 34 PSI to occlude, to block off the windpipe. Most people wouldn't really relate to PSI. What does that actually mean? So if I was to say to you that if you had a, a can of soft drink and you opened the ring pull, that takes 20 PSI. The average adult male handshake is between 80 to 100 pounds per square inch. So you can see from that that not very much pressure is actually required. If someone's being strangled, the length of time that it takes for them to lose consciousness will vary and that will depend on the amount of pressure that's being applied. However, what we do know from experiments on healthy adult male volunteers is that on average it took 6.8 seconds for them to lose consciousness. If the pressure on the neck was continued then at 15 seconds some of them lost control of their bladder so they wet themselves. If the pressure was continued then at 30 seconds some of them lost control of their bowels so they soiled themselves. If someone's been strangled the first thing is to get to a safe place if possible um, away from the attacker. We would um, urge people to seek immediate help so phone 999. Regardless of the, whether they want to report to the police, they should seek immediate medical help um, for that strangulation so that they can be assessed and make sure that there's no um, life-threatening issues for them. It would also allow them to be um, assessed in a holistic way, looking at um, the physical health, the mental health, and also the safeguarding, so their immediate safety. Yes, support is definitely available for people making reports of strangulation. They could seek help from their GP, they could seek help from um, emergency departments, if there's a criminal investigation, then they could um, receive support from what we call IDVAs, Independent um, Domestic Violence Advisors, or if it was in the context of sexual violence, an ISVA, Independent Sexual Violence Advisor. And these are specialised workers who will support a victim from reports through the criminal justice process, so whether the case goes up to court and beyond. Also counselling would be available for patients, so victim survivors. There's also a number of charities available um, who would help people if they've um, been through strangulation. So definitely, I suppose the key message is don't suffer in silence. Um, tell somebody there is support out there for victims and that doesn't matter whether it was a day ago, a week ago or 10 years ago. Um, seek help.